This hairstyle is beautiful, but if you're over 50, you should not be wearing it. Look, long one length hair is great, but there is one massive problem with it. I'm gonna break down exactly what that problem is, which more importantly, you can avoid it. Take a quick look at this photo. Here's a beautiful woman in a free flowing dress. She looks great. She's rocking it and it definitely is a look. Now, here's the same woman in that same dress, but slightly modified. Now these two, which would you say accentuates her frame better? Don't you wanna be able to show off those things you love and draw maybe a little less attention to the things you don't? We do it with our clothing all the time. And the same thing goes for our hair. For our hair, the way we achieve that is through layering. Whereas clothing, we achieve that look through tailoring. That is the difference between one length hair and layered hair. Now, one length hair can be beautiful, but at the end of the day, it just flat doesn't have the ability to accentuate things about our face in the same way that a free flowing dress doesn't have the ability to accentuate someone's frame the same way that a tailored dress does. Nine out of 10 times when I have a new client sit on my chair and they've got long one length hair, they'll tell me what they want and what their problems and struggles are. And then I say, well, we're gonna need to layer it. And the immediate reaction is always, no, 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 no. It always ends up looking really choppy or the ends look very thin or even worse, they cut the top so short, it looked like a mushroom. Nobody wants to look like a mushroom. And I get it. These concerns are completely valid. They absolutely happen all the time. But in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly why they happen and much more importantly, how you can avoid them. I need to make it very clear, so please listen. I am not against you having long one length hair. If you feel amazing in that style, that's what you need to do, ignore what I say completely. Okay, the number one mistake that happens is that the bottom is just layered way too much. It can make your hair feel, one, very thin at the bottom. So if you've got thin hair, this is a massive problem and you will probably never get layers again if this has ever happened once. Don't ever get the other concern is that this can make your hair look very choppy. And this actually can make it much harder for you to style because there's so many ends in there and so much choppiness that you need to smooth out that it can almost become overwhelming. Here's the good thing though. This isn't a hair texture problem nine out of 10 times. This is a simple cut problem. Most beauty schools, the technique that stylists are taught for how to layer hair lends itself to creating this exact concern. And most stylists have never been kind of taught how to avoid it. How do you avoid it? We have what's called recession and then an occipital bone. And if you draw a line from here to here, that is called a parietal ridge. And when you start from behind the ear, everything below that should almost be one length, opposed to what stylists are taught in school many times, which is to pull all of that stuff down there straight out and layer it as well that ends up overlaying your hair. But if you instead leave that one length, you actually end up with like bottom line that looks a lot thicker and doesn't have all of those layers. As long as you let the stylist know that you don't want any of that hair that is below that parietal ridge to be layered, you want that basically one length or as close to as possible. That already is gonna take you a long way into getting layering that is done correctly. And yes, I wish they would stop teaching that technique in school. Please, no. No. But they aren't going to. Okay, now by now you're already probably thinking, well, how do I find a stylist that actually knows this? That's a fair question, but don't worry. At the end of the video, I've got you covered. I'm gonna actually explain a very simple way that you can create the benefits of having layers without actually having to worry about finding the right stylist. I'm gonna say number two is the mushroom cut. Yeah, I've never heard somebody say I want a mushroom cut. <laughs> it's just not a thing. But this happens all the time. This generally happens because people go to their stylists and say, my hair's feeling really flat. I think we need to take the layers on the top a little bit shorter. You get layers on top that don't balance with the overall length because they're just too short. It just kind of ends up frustrating. Now the question is, how do we avoid that? If you actually grab a piece of hair from this bone right here and you lift it straight all the way up as high as you can lift it, then you grab a piece of hair from the top of your head where you want layers. You lift that hair all the way up. Those top layers should never be shorter than the hair that you're holding onto coming up from your occipital bone. And so what you can do is actually use this knowledge to explain to your stylist how short you wanna take your layers. You can grab that hair out the occipital bone, pull it straight up, see how long that is. Grab the hair on top of your head, pull it straight up, and then just mark with your finger where that length is from the back, and then let that hair fall down to the side, and it'll show you how long your layers need to be to balance with the overall length of your hair. And then you can take that to your stylist and say, I want layers on top, but I don't want my layers to be any shorter than this length. Okay, the best way to dip your toe into layering without going full bore is to simply do front layers. This means that you're not layering the back of your hair or anything on top, you're just layering it in the front. Beautiful thing about this is it grows out really easily 
and you can still get a lot of movement and shape in the front, allowing for more volume in areas that's going to help accentuate aspects of your face that you might want to accentuate. But most important, if you just flat iron that or style that straight down, it kind of blends in as almost it's one length. Okay, now we are on to the most controversial part of this entire video. Here is how you find the perfect stylist. You're gonna do the front layers by yourself. Sounds controversial. You can actually do front layers at home. You're probably already thinking there is no possible way I'm ever coming at my face or my hair with shears. But when it comes to front layering, I've created a system that makes it very simple and makes it basically impossible to mess up. Now, if you're still concerned about doing it yourself or maybe you think that you can, I'll challenge you this. Watch this video right here. I break down step by step how to go about actually giving yourself front layers. See if it isn't easier than you might actually think. So go ahead and check out this video. Uh, and if I still haven't convinced you that there is some benefit to layering, feel free to go ahead and comment below and yell at me. I get it. But otherwise, I'll see you in that video.